Hey everybody, it's Tyler here for Behind the Bot, and I'm checking out team number 7974, Great Scott out of Mequon, Wisconsin, here at the Lakeshore event in Wisconsin as well, too. And I'm here with Rue, Daniel, and Alex, and we're gonna be talking more about this super cool robot here on Behind the Bot, uh, talking about, of course, their uh, intake collector and shooter that they have for the uh, ring, but I really want you to focus on this wobble goal mechanism when we talk about that. Super cool, not just 3D printed, another neat thing as well too. And uh, some cool pre-programmed functions all here on Behind the Bot. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. So, Ru, we're going to start out, of course, with the uh, journey of the ring going through this robot. You guys got some neat uh, mechanisms, especially this... Uh, a uh, hopper you have here, I'd love to hear more about that, but take us through the entire journey of the ring on your robot. All right, of course. So right here we have the uh, active intake. It's made up of three uh, axles here with wheels on them that we cut down to size. These three axles were kind of a, uh, a pain to get in the right place, but once they did get in the right place, they, they worked out and it, it was really smooth. Right here we have, we, we call it the magazine. Uh, the hopper is also a good way to say it. Um, it's a 3D printed part, uh, it didn't start out that way. It was very, very iterative and eventually we came to this form. And then it moves up and then a servo from the other side pushes the rings into the 6,000 RPM motor here. This is just a flat plate. We kind of guessed on the angle and got it right one day. And then that's how we got to the angle of this plate here. And it shoots the rings out. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the, for the life of a ring. So tell me, tell me about, uh, specifically on this hopper here, what made you decide to want to do kind of this, this two-stage here where essentially it's got to go in, then you got to move it up on that versus like maybe something that's fully integrated all the way through? Sure. So we figured that we didn't have to use that many axles or rollers to get the, ro get the rings to where they need to be. The easiest way to do that was to have one ramp that's a little smaller and then actually have a servo move them sure. up higher because we wanted to get them higher in order to shoot them, essentially, is, is where we needed to be. Um, so, I don't know, it just came to be like this. We figured this would be a good way to get them on that angle. Yeah, and, and tell me a little about uh, these wheels here, because you got a couple different ones on here. Why, uh, what's the reason for having one type of material here versus a different material here? Sure, so initially it was honestly just, uh, we, were, we were playing around with it. Yeah. We were really just trying to find what, what would work, and it was just lucky that these wheels worked these ways. And then we never changed them. We figured, you know, if it, if it isn't broke, don't fix it, and, and the wheels stuck, so. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So let's move on here uh, to your wobble goal manipulator. Sure. Uh, love to hear more about this. Uh, and this this kind of almost this passive grabber that you have, I think is super cool. Uh, so walk me through uh, what it is, how it works, and maybe some of your uh, design process through it as well too. All right. Well, we've had a lot of design pro or, or iterations of it. So we initially started with a gear system, which clamped, um, which clamped the wobble. But then we decided that it was too complex of a structure. Sure. So we decided to have a passive one with a PVC pipe. It was just a straight PVC pipe. Um, but the problem with that is that we had to get it too accurate um, to be able to grab the wobble. So there wasn't much leeway to um, for accuracy. And then we decided that if we created a 3D printed part with a skirt, at the end of it, then it would allow for much more room for the stem of the wobble to slip into the hole and then we can easily grab it. Uh, now I know we're not on the ground right now, but can we actually start picking one up? Is that possible? Oh, I see, okay. So I was under a little bit different pressure, I think, with it, but I like how you got the extra servo that just turns it in. Uh, that makes a lot of sense on that. So yeah, I love it. That's super cool, man. Yeah, and we also have um, several functions with the wobble goals. So we have, um, we initiate the wobble mode, and then we also lock the wobble once we have it in place. Sure. And then 
We also bring it up, and then we also have a button that releases it over the wall, like so. Well, that's, I think that's a good segue to go into uh, some of your systems uh, and the controls on here with the programming. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about some of the uh, different pre-programmed instructions you have for this robot and how you came to those processes. Yeah, so for Teleop this year, we really wanted to make it simple for our drivers. So for our second driver, who controls all of the accessory movements, like the intake, the shooter, and the wobble, we've created three different modes for them. So it defaults in intake mode, where they can only control that intake, and they can suck or spit. And then hitting another button puts it into shoot mode, which slows down the entire drivetrain to make sure. it more accurate. And it allows them just to really easily shoot the, the reins. And then for end game, it goes into wobble mode, which again slows the drivetrain to make it really accurate. And it's just like three different buttons to lock the wobble and then place it on the... Does it do wobble. like a wobble dance at the end or anything like that? Like going back it or anything could. like that? It could, but it doesn't. I yet. mean, that's the next process to yeah. do on this, yeah, I yeah. think. So. That's what we're doing for the next competition. Well, I can't wait to see that. Uh, great Scott here, their second event uh, here at the Lakeshore Qualifier. Looking for a big outcome here. We'll see how they do, but good luck the rest of the way this season. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us, guys. Thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.